Good morning, everybody. I'm Stacy with Stacy's Organizing and Decorating for Life. I'm here to help you organize your thoughts and decorate your perspectives. This is my assistant narrator, Grant. She's also the director. Anyway, today our topic is going to be adult children of crazy. And crazy is a word that sometimes it's humorous and sometimes it's not so humorous. But today we're using it because I want us to embrace our disorders, to reduce the stigmas of those things so that we can get the right and proper healing. But before we get started, if you like that's our topic today first, hit, please hit the like and subscribe button below. Secondly, I have to remind you that I'm not a doctor, therapist, or a scientist, but I love sharing about those things. I do study those things. I am a life coach, and I deal primarily with addiction, codependency, and grief, but not exclusively to those things, because underneath those things lies a desire for healing and healthy relationships, as well as development of spiritual and soul consciousness, which leads us to the topic of our day-to-day, -day. because the healing part, a lot of the healing comes from our past intergenerational trauma, or genetics, or societal, however we choose to, to receive it or not choose to receive it is is you know doesn't really matter when we get to be an adult it's about healing it and it's up to us to heal our wounds no one outside of us is going to heal our wounds but we may try that hence the codependence and everything else so these disorders you know codependency some of them lead to codependency because we just want to be taken care of because in a lot of these disorders that I'm about to to reveal to you is that people feel, you know, abandoned, neglected. They have had trauma due to, you know, the different types. So I'm going to go over these different types before I talk about the, what I learned in the adult children of alcoholics, because some of the behaviors that we pick up in the adult children of alcoholics certainly go along with the rest of these disorders, which are bipolar, schizophrenia, depression, obsessive compulsive disorder, delusional disorder, substance abuse disorder, narcissism, and these can result in co codependency and have, you know, that families may isolate. More parts of this is that, you know, when people are dealing with this, this is what happens is the, some of the results of dealing with this and, and what happens during this, these disorders, is that there's unpredictability. And then there's, sub, you know, the substance abuse. People sometimes use that as a coping skill. Some of the, these end up being coping skills, a lot of these, and it develops into a new disorder or the codependency like I talked about. There's depression. There's suicidal thoughts. And sometimes there's tendencies, and people deal with this, as well as the self-inflicted injuries, the delusional parent where we don't know what's true or not, and the traumatic bonding. There's hallucinations, there's inappropriate behaviors that happen in these families. And so, you know, there's explosive disorders, there's, you know, hypermania, and there's opioid disorder, disassociative disorder, there's obsessive compulsive disorders. And so when we're living with this, and then we, t in turn, turn around, we develop these. There's no way we're going to come out as this so-called normal. So we develop our own survival skills in dealing with this. So now I'll read to you some of the... Um, results of being an adult child of an alcoholic, which is something that I was willing to discover before I discovered my own problem with substance abuse. You know, so this comes. This was written by a man named Buddy T, and it's on the Very Well Mind um, website. So these are the things for the adult child of an alcoholic. Some of the symptoms besides walking on eggshells, a lot of people walk on eggshells when they are living in these dysfunctional families as children. They walk on eggshells and, and try to fix things and things like this. These are obvious second-guessing ourselves and our language because we have to we teeter-totter around and we learn this manipulative language to try to get what we want because we are not feeling heard. Many of us have disorders such as stuttering. This affects us mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, and financially, oftentimes the results of this, these disorders. It's our responsibility as adults to repair these disorders. So first I entered ACA when I was younger, probably 18, 19 years old. So this is the symptoms of an adult shot of an alcoholic, which I believe can go along with the other disorders. Is It's guessing what is normal behavior. Having difficulty following a project through from beginning to end, you know, because we are often uprooted, right? So it's hard. 
and there's no interest in our projects is sometimes we feel like an accessory to the crime of our parents' different disorders. You know, one usually has one disorder and another one because it, it's all meant for our divine healing. But, you know, for whatever reason, maybe there's young parents, maybe, you know, they didn't learn these lifestyle skills, you know. So it's just about healing and getting better and evolving, not blaming, really, honestly. It's, we lie when it would just be, be just as easy to tell the truth because we live in these fantasy worlds because we want this life that we don't have when we're living in all this dysfunction. So, and we're often told to keep secrets, you know, and so we come up with different stories. We judge ourselves without mercy. It's often, you know, more the harder judgments on ourselves, but it does extend outwards because we feel we're being judged when we're judging ourselves. We have difficulty having fun because we never know when the other shoe is going to fall, right? This is a sign, you know, when I know that someone's waiting for the other shoe to fall, I know that they've probably grown up in a home where there's these disorders. They take themselves too seriously, very seriously. I myself had to learn through my life coach experience not to take myself so seriously and, uh, you know, everything else. Have difficulty with intimate relationships, and this is because we don't have a healthy relationship to mirror or emulate. I know that my first relationships were exactly like I thought relationships were supposed to be, which was an unhealthy relationship, you know, of all these defects that, my young parents had, you know, teenage parents. Or they weren't teenagers when I was actually, well, one was a teen. You know, anyway, our, our parents may have, you know, if they haven't done the healing work themselves. And, it, it, you know, in all fairness, the healing work wasn't as rapidly available as it is today for people back when my parents were younger. And it wasn't brought up. You know, people just didn't talk about these things. Everything's being talked about now, right? So, um... They, they overreact to changes when they feel they have no control because they know they have no control. And the more we have no control, no matter what age we are, it seems like the more we try to control until we realize that control is a defect and that, you know, there's more peace without trying to have that control. But we try to make our environment outside of us more controlled because of that lack of control. <clears throat> and then we constantly seek approval and affirmation. It's because sometimes in our, you know, homes growing up, a lot of people were seen and not heard, you know, and, and our our feelings weren't validated and they weren't affirmed when we were growing up oftentimes. We were just shuffled here and there and, you know, it wasn't really thought about because we were just kids. And um, we feel that we're different from other people, you know, because we look at other people and think that they have these so-called normal lives, you know, and maybe... Some people are living homeless. Maybe some people don't have the hygiene that other people are allowed and get because when there's no interest in the children, they're not learning a lot of the things and life skills that some children may be learning in other homes. And so they don't know. They have to mirror what the other kids are doing to know what is so-called normal. And they're super responsible or irresponsible. I know, you know, a lot oftentimes that the firstborn is the one who takes care of the other kids when the parents are in rages or there's abuse going on in the home of some sort. It's, you know, it, but it's not always the, the firstborn, probably. That's just my experience. And then there is... They're, they're, extremely, they're extremely loyal in the face and evidence that the loyalty is undeserved. You know, the kids will not tell the secrets. They won't. They'll, they'll protect their parents. They'll protect the abuse, you know, the abusive behavior, even if it's not the parents. If it's somebody else, they'll protect that because maybe they don't even want the parents, you know, to see. I know that somebody inappropriately touched me when I was younger, and I was afraid to tell my family or my dad because I knew my dad was going to go kill this man, you know, so I was afraid. Um, they may tend to lock themselves in a course of action without giving serious consideration to alternative behaviors or possible consequences. And this is because they didn't learn how to properly problem solve, you know, and, and everything. They weren't taught to think about how to properly problem solve, so they've never seen that. So oftentimes they get locked and loaded or dig their heels in thinking that things have to be a certain way because they haven't learned to explore 
different possibilities and, and not be afraid of the different possibilities is because they just want security. We just want security. And it's oftentimes that we keep developing and, and refilling insecurity as a part of that. So, like I said, that was from a very well mind by Buddy T. You know, so when I made it down to the other end of the hall or the other side of the spectrum, the other room, I ended up in, you know, AANA. And um, my first sponsor, along with working the steps, she suggested that I read the book called A Road Less Traveled by M. Scott Peck. And so it talked about a lot of the way that our minds function and the different, you know, things that we go through as children growing up and, and how this, you know... <clears throat> develops us and our thinking and our adult life and and the things that we go through and so I had I've read this book twice and I can't tell you word for word verbatim what it says and I of course gave the book away to somebody else so I don't have the book I do have a further the, a further down the road less traveled easy for somebody else to say further down the road less traveled which I will read and I also have the second book and we're going to discuss it when we get there as well another book not the second book but another book so I did look at some videos and research on some people's takes of the road less traveled to, to reflect and recall my memory and so looking at that it's it's like love is not a feeling it's an action not a myth you know it's not the myth of romantic love never mind that so I'm just trying to read without my glasses <laughs> so there's four sections to the road less travel in, in looking at that. There's discipline. That life is difficult and getting an acceptance of life being difficult. You know, we've talked about there's an ebb and flow to life. And it's human beings want to come here because we come from that nirvana. And we want to think that things are supposed to be a certain way. And it's our for our better evolution and growth in this life that we learn how to problem solved, that we learn how to maneuver. That's why there's attraction to movies and video games where people get to be our heroes to where we learn to maneuver and go through these different obstacles of life. But when it comes to ourselves, it's painful. So it does hurt. And there is a reason and a purpose for it, but sometimes people feel that there isn't. Love. Love is a reason and a purpose for it. And then, that because that's the second part, and that's the will to extend oneself you know, for yours and other spiritual growth. And then there's the growth in religion, and that's, you know, the personal personal views and the religious ideas. That's about having faith and having something outside of yourself to help you get through these obstacles and bends and turns in life and love. And then when we get to grace, that's something that we receive. You know, it's something that you hear the word so many times, but it's often in those hardest times in our lives that we realize this thing called grace. At least it was for me, and the definition here is the universal force that includes spiritual evolution and growth. And it does for me because each of the obstacles that I've had to reach out for a power greater than myself, I've developed a stronger relationship and bigger relationship with that power greater than myself, which is very eclectic, y'all. So I'm not telling you how to define a power greater than yourself. But the thing is, is that we are defect, we are affected by disorders, you know, like I said, mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, and financially. So this other one, that this other video that I watch is from 1% Better on YouTube, and it says, here, you know, here are some things, life is difficult, but accepting life is easier. So the first one is accept responsibility for our problems. Solving problems help us grow. You know, so again, we go back to that solving problem. So that's one of the things that we start working on, you know, with a sponsor or in therapy, or you could work with the clergy. But oftentimes it's our own thinking gets us in our biggest messes is what we learn in recovery. So being able to reach out and ask for help, you know, for somebody to help you get out of these stigmas and these things going on in your own mind, because you reflect that out when you think that you, there's a shame to be involved in that. So then the second one is that love is separateness, that we accept each other's individuality. You know, a lot of people are looking for love outside of themselves, and they want this enmeshment, and hence that codependency and everything else that they think somebody else is supposed to make them feel a certain way. But we are love. That's part of that nirvana, and it, I think that our journey on life is to be able to achieve that nirvana within connecting our humanness with our spirituality. And I think that that's so much of what M. Scott Peck is trying to talk about. And that honesty is freedom that lies lead to more lies, you know. And so we learn that, that 
we, you know, living in the real world. This brings us to the second book that I read by M. Scott Peck, though, and that was called People of the Lie. And this is where we get into some of the disorders such as narcissist traits and, and all of this because these people cannot look at the flaws of their past or the pain of their past and uncover that. They don't want to see that. They were brought in these intergenerational families to where this one story is told and they believe in that one story, which comes off sometimes as arrogance because they've come up in a family where people esteemed themselves by the material outside stuff of how things look on the outside. You know, while things may be in turmoil on the inside, the way that things look on the outside. So that turmoil on the inside is why people get you know, and don't like the word narcissist is because it explodes on the outside. It has explosive immature behavior, and all of us seem to have these narcissistic capacities. However, narcissism is something that is usually grown out of as we get older. But all of these disorders would, I think, involve a part of narcissism. As I said, I'm not a doctor, but I believe with all the disorders it involves because until there's some healing on some part and looking at our own selves and, and starting our own growth process, that we will tend to try to defend ourselves from those disorders or people with those other disorders that match and mirror ours. You know, there's Lisa Romano, I refer to her a lot, who does a lot of videos on the codependence and narcissism relationships, and I've talked about that, you know, how that the codependents will give their power away and the narcissist will actually take it. Unless you have a narcissist, though, can a codependent, person who's codependent oftentimes learn to work on their codependency because they need this the pain, they have to have that pain to be able to grow it's sad but it's true you know and so that's what I'm trying to bring to your attention now is that when we're in pain when we're suffering from what the way that other people behave it's to be able to heal ourselves and then those sufferings on the outside won't hurt so much on the inside it's not to make you hard it's to make you in fact more indeed love because once you can love yourself more when you're not dependent on that outside love you have more to give as crazy as it sounds so my last two videos have been long I want to say that when we look at you know the people of the lie, what he's looking at in this this book is he's looking at the evil and evil and veil have just a, a little mix-up of words. It's the same letters and, and illusion. You know, it's it's where we lift the veil through the pa the path, the pain and peace, and explore that collision. You know, the the collision of how do we get to peace from the pain? You know, and it's overall the healing effect. It breaks the illusions for those who want to see the rightness or perfection in the harmful behavior of others. You know, and then. St. Augustine says, hate the sin, but love the sinner. That's advice. So while I say all of this, I'm not encouraging you or telling you that you have to put up with anything. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying that we need to look at the healing because a lot of times what we do as human beings is rather than look at the healing, we bounce from one relationship to the next, hoping that it's getting better because we think we know what we don't want, so we're going to go into this next relationship. But until we heal ourselves we're still taking the energy of what we don't want into that relationship until we've learned who our true authentic essence is then we can you know know who we are and not depend on somebody else to give us our feelings so i don't know we have gone to almost 20 minutes on this video i want to let you know here's the hope shot because i don't want to leave you without hope shot if you can get with a clergy or life coach or you know, a therapist or somebody that you trust to work on these things because, like I said, it's our own thinking that has got us to this pain, you know, oftentimes. As we can help what happened when we were growing up in these disorders, but as adults, we can help what's going on. Sorry that when each time I pick this notebook up, it reflects more light. But I want you to understand that as I read these things of the ACA, you know, these conditions that people develop, that we can develop another condition through our growth, through this love, spirituality, this, you know, the pain, and, and to realize that there is suffering. But on the other side of suffering, suffering, there's peace. So when I read these before, you know, it's guessing what normal is. When we go through the healing process, we don't care what normal is. In fact, you know, it's probably we understand that other people, once we get out of our own pain, we understand that other people are experiencing a pain that we know nothing about. So we're able to get an acceptance of that, you know, and that, that 
how other people act as a reflection of what they're dealing with, not of who we are. Okay? And then it has, says we have difficulty following a project through from beginning to end until I got clean. I never could follow anything through. And I have managed to do many accomplishments now. And I love learning now where I used to be intimidated by learning before I, you know, got into recovery. So recovery, though, it sometimes may seem like the worst thing in the world to accept a disease or disorder. When we get to the other side, there's peace and possibilities, and we find our purpose, okay? So we don't have to lie anymore. We understand that after we work through this process and we talk to somebody, you know, the clergy, the sponsor, the life coach, somebody where we don't receive shame for expressing who we actually are, you know, and the feelings that we actually feel and not getting judgment, but being able not to take ourselves so seriously as it says lower and to find the humor that crazy in our thinking and to embrace and accept that, you know, and then we don't judge ourselves without mercy and we don't judge anybody else without mercy because we've learned that really there's nothing going to be come from judging anybody, you know, and then we don't, we don't have difficulty as much difficulty with intimate relationships because it is still a growth process, the intimate relationships. We learn how to be honest and authentic. So I'm not saying that you run out and just find the perfect relationship. It's still a growth process of you learning how to embrace yourself and love yourself. And then you can love others authentically and intimately. And we don't overreact to changes that we no longer have control over. In fact, we learn to enjoy the adventures of this life on life's terms. You know, it's accepting life on life's terms. And we don't constantly seek approval and affirmation. We, you know, we accept ourselves and we don't need that when we do that. But it's funny how we seem to get more approval when we love ourselves and accept ourselves. And we don't feel that we're different from other people, or if we do, we feel that it's okay. We learn to embrace the diversity of all people and learn that everybody's on their own path, and they get it when they get it, and they get there when they do, you know, and that we're not super responsible or irresponsible, that somewhere in the between we got to find a balance, that it's fun to embrace our childlikeness, but we also have to have that responsibility to where we are acceptable and responsible and productive members of society so I'm not saying go full throttle either way it's about being able to embrace both sides of that and then we're also able to you know not wait on the other shoe to fall we're able to be like okay you know this is just the ebb and flow of life on life's terms once again and that we're not as impulsive that we learn to play the, the tape through you know and that we don't have to get locked and loaded you know when presented with a problem we have the Boundaries. We learn boundaries with ourselves, and we learn boundaries with others to say, let me think about that instead of thinking that we have to people please and jump on this question or opportunity so people will like us. When we love ourselves, we're able to say, let me think about that. And if we're overextended already or we have other things, that we're, you know, responsibilities, then we're able to say, I'm sorry, I've got this to do. And it oftentimes works out that we learn how to problem solve and work around other things. You know, it gets to be fun. So... I just want you to understand that there's no shame in seeking help for any of these disorders, you know, and I want to break down those stigmas and those thoughts that there's something wrong with you because there's something wrong with all of us, especially if we're judging people for these disorders, you know, and, and, and such. I don't like dealing with that duality. There is diversity, but we don't have to be duality about it. You know, the diversity is, is more accepting of people's differences. Duality is where we're colliding with people's differences, at least in my mind. So I hope this, this video has been helpful. I've tried to make it shorter than the last two on love, but love is so very expansive and love never ends. And so I want, you know, when I'm, I'm going now and I want to wish you much peace and love and I look forward to connecting with you next time. Thank you so much. And again, you can reach me at stacyreinick at gmail.com, stacyforlife.com, or you can find me on social, most social media platforms as Stacy Renee. And all of that will be listed below because I, I'm not using the other device that I can actually edit that in yet. And I will learn how to edit on this one at some point in time. I'm working on it. We are all a work in progress. There's no destination to arrive at. It's just a constant ebb and flow. So thank you. Thank you very much. Have a great week. Bye.